Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. The energy adjusts. My partner steps aside. And everyone in the room gets a chance to discern. What is the energy here? Is it what you expected? Is it what you came for? The lyrics of the song that you just heard are perfect for this message. How many of you understand the truth of what God inside really is? The creation of the human being was on purpose. The whole human race's existence is on purpose. Some of the anomalies that you have that your science can't figure out is on purpose. Having 23 chromosomes instead of 24 is on purpose. It sets you aside from the mammals right below you in an evolutionary state. It makes you look at yourselves differently. What if? What if? Everything I am saying right now is from the other side of the veil and is totally given in love. There are those right now who listen to this voice, even in this room, who would doubt this is real. I know who you are here. You're a perfect creation of God with free will to discern for yourself what is right for yourself, what's happening around you for yourself, you're on your own. When it comes to deciding, you're on your own. And that means that there is a respect for whatever you decide. You might have heard that there is a time and a place for everything. And there is. There's a time to awaken. There's a time to reject. There's a time to be a hermit and climb into that place where you have to analyze who you are. And we know that. But here's what you have to know. When you're doing all that, and we say you're on your own, That which is your logic is on your own. That which is your heart is on your own. But you're never alone while you do it. Regardless of how you feel about this channel or this meeting or even the idea of this, there is a constant truth the human being is walking side by side with God. Spirit is always, always in you, with you, beside you, in everything you do. Always has been. With the total unbeliever who walks out of here saying, I don't need any of this. It's foolishness go my own way without any of this metaphysical nonsense and you walk out you walk down the street and all the angels are right with you they're right there you're in totally disbelief and it doesn't matter you see God inside is God inside regardless of what you believe and speaking of belief biggest stumbling block to being able to awaken 
and see that which is more than you think you have. The biggest stumbling block is your own history. How did you grow up? What were you told? Before you came to this meeting, what's your idea? What did you pre-decide would be here, dear human? What reality did you create? What wall did you put up or tear down? The history of that which you come in with often determines what you'll go out with. Unless, that is, something happens. And that's something that we talk about perhaps is a softening. Where you might actually say to yourself, is it possible there are things I don't know? <laughs> Could it be that there are spiritual things, esoteric things, multidimensional things that are around me that I don't know? Oh, it might go against what I've been told or what I expect. They might be there. And if that's you, dear human being, I'll tell you, you're in the right place at the right time to discern. Not to be grabbed by some truth or entity or awakened, but to have the discernment door open. So that which you call your heart, your brain, your logic, and your intuition can take a good look. if you really take a good look you'll see there's a light behind the door a light that has your face waiting to come out to fill every piece of DNA in your body and change you forever and change you in a way that you really can't even fathom I'm going to talk later today about some of the tools that are new in this shift. Personal ones inside you that are going to start to work and awaken. But they're not going to happen, especially to the old soul, without a little discernment on your part see if it's real or not. It's a fun meeting to attend, you might say. It's an interesting one. There's information here. There's meditation. Oh, doesn't it feel good? Can't you feel the love? And then you leave. Or there's really something different here. The man in the chair is really channeling. The voice is from the other side of the veil. It's the creative source who knows of your perfection, of the sweetness of your soul, and sees you in a way you won't even see yourself. Dear human being, I want to tell you something. Whoever you think you are, you can double it problem solving, in balance, in healing. You come here perhaps for a healing today. If that's you and your heart is soft right now and you can feel what I'm saying and hear the choir, <laughs> hear the music, it's a metaphor. The choir is yourselves singing the healing song that you came for. And you wouldn't be the first one to walk out differently than you came in. Nothing happens from this stage to change you. Nothing. The energy you feel in the room, if you do, is created from an entourage that you brought with you. Every soul here carries pieces and parts that you don't even know you have, multi-dimensional things 
They're always with you. They fill the room right now. If you really knew who was here, what was here, I think you'd be astonished. There is so much support for any decision you would make right now to open that door and look at yourself differently. Everything happens because you make it happen. Self-responsibility is the key. Old soul, you know that. To be who you wish by opening the door and actually taking that which is already yours with free choice. Is it too esoteric for you? There are those who will leave this day and you really won't know what has happened until it starts happening in your life and you realize you did make a decision to see more of yourself. Is it possible that there is something esoterically divine inside you that is greater than anyone has told you on this planet? Don't you feel it? Don't you feel it? Can't you sit there right now and know you're an old soul? You've lived on this planet before, most of you, in this room, listening to this. You don't have to know when and where and how. You just can feel you've been here before. You're a wise old soul. You know how this works. And you sit in a place in history that is unique. You stood in line to be here right now for this shift in this culture no accidents for you it's a short message a loving message and all it is saying is that there's more here than you think and it's for the taking it always has been there's a few of you right now who really needed to hear this in the room. I know who's here. And you're going to feel differently when you leave. And you won't leave alone. You won't leave alone. It's enough for now. I'll be back. And so it is. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. There are those who still say that this process should take longer. That for a human being to get in a position where they step aside to such an extent that spirit would flow in fully. There ought to be more preparation. But the cellular structure of humanity is just not built to take that much energy that quickly. And what we want to say to you is what we have said before. That each one of you, especially in this specific new energy, is changing and changing at the cellular level, if you wish to. You've seen two channels today. And you've seen spirit flow into the body instantly, without preparation. In an old energy, it's like a blanket laying on you that you have to fight through, cut through. But not now. Not now. 
Now for you, individually and personally, let me ask you something. You sit in a meeting like this, specifically at a right time and a right place to hear this. You leave this place and in your mind it's a 3D experience. You're now going to do something else. Perhaps there's a meal in your future. And you segment your life with the clock and the energies you're going to experience. This is one of them. And I'm going to ask you to become more and more multidimensional. I want you to think beyond the clock and the, and the separation that you would do with something that is so intuitive to you. A walk with God inside is an intuitive plan for a human. It's an action. You wake up in the morning, it's there. Human beings segment that which is sacred, that which is worship. And in all the belief systems, it's segmented. You report here, you worship there, you pray here. You kneel here. And then it's over and you go do something else. I'm going to ask you, does that really suit you? Do you want to compartmentalize God in your life? To the point that it's only available when you decide it's time to meditate. What if I told you that the invitation is 24-7? I want you to think about that. What if you were always in a state of thankfulness, in graciousness? Right now you are indeed hearing a message from the other side of the veil, but it isn't the other side at all. It's inside. Why don't you start relabeling that which is 3D? It separates you and God. It's not a message from the other side. There is no other side. There's only one side. And the side that is you in a relationship that's 24-7. This is what enhances the intuitive issue that we wish to talk about. Old souls, this is the next step. Whether you believe right now that this is channeling or just a man in a chair, the ones who know that this is real and feel that this is real, I'll tell you, this is the next step. A 24-7 experience. Not so that you walk around in a daze or in meditation or act odd or strange. It is what you carry to work, to school, in the family. When you shut your eyes going to sleep, when you wake up in the morning, it's there again. It's with you through the night. Some of you are being awakened, often at 3 or 3.30. I know who's here. I don't want to ask you, what do you do with that? Is there a momentary irritation that says, Oh, I've got to get sleep here. What are you doing, Spirit? I said this once before. I'll say it again. I invite you to smile. Look at the clock and smile. Again, I'm awake. <laughs> and I want you to know that it's our way of tapping you on the shoulder and say, you know we're here, don't you? Now go back to sleep. That's it. We're always there. Don't make it a place you report to. Or a time on the clock that you spend time with. 
make it all the time. Crying, when are we supposed to meditate? The answer is yes. <laughs> Crying, once you said you don't have to meditate anymore. That's correct. If it's 24-7, you're always in a state like meditation. You are always in that which is honoring God. Crying, you mean we can walk around and just do regular work and, and talk to people and have that always in us? Yes, it's called a spiritual reality. And that's the invitation. There are those who say, I'm not really sure I can do that. And if you say that's because you've always segmented it before. You've always put it in, in containers. And I want you now to understand the container is you and the time is now 24-7. Dear ones, there are tools, if you want to call it that, tools that you're going to start to receive in this new energy those who wish to experience what we will call an evolution of spiritualness there are going to be some new tools and an evolution of spiritualness is not getting more spiritual it's an evolution what if I told you that a person who is very spiritual is one that you can't even tell is spiritual. One that simply walks around balanced and knows who they are. Knows God is inside. Doesn't have to yell it from the treetops. One can walk from place to place no matter what and be peaceful and not in fear. Comfortable all the time. Because they know who they are. Balanced all the time compassionate all the time slow to anger slow to be irritated willing to listen that's God inside that is an evolution of spirituality in a human being that's what it is in an older energy some belief systems actually understood fully the reincarnation process and an evolvement of spirit that actually put them in an enlightened path that they believe will create someday an enlightened human being. They would be so enlightened you couldn't even touch them. In an old energy, that was that was ex absolutely true that's what happens in an old energy with an evolution that is not ready yet for the time monks would achieve the nirvana would have to literally go into another room you couldn't touch them and there they would be alone creating their own light all their life all of this is changing this is now moving to the common human. It is different, dear ones. It is different. It is not a return to the ancients at all. This energy that you are in now is going to promote things you don't expect, you don't know. And I'm, I'm filling in the gap. I want to discuss things that are going to happen to you, to your children in your next life, in your next life, that have to do with an awakening spirit, a closeness with the creative source. That is enlightenment, a balance, compassion, peacefulness, and love. That's the definition of light. It's not here yet, is it? But old soul, it can be, it starts now with a 24-7 relationship with that which is inside you in every particle of DNA, every molecule. 
there are some new tools coming your way and they're not necessarily what you expect there are some that you do and some you don't and now I tell my partner I'm going to give you concepts you haven't seen before and as you channel them understand that you will not be able to describe them accurately because we say yet again dear one it is very difficult to describe to you something you don't know, have not seen, don't expect. New tools, what does that mean? It means that as you progress through your lives, <laughs> through the generations, through the enhancement of the human's consciousness, that you're going to be able to do things haven't been able to do. Now, this should make sense to you. If it's true that your DNA is going to work better and at a higher efficiency than it ever has in the departments of multidimensionality, you're going to see that there's going to be a progression of things to expect that you haven't been able to do before. And you need them. I want to talk about number one, Akashic Acuity. Now, this only means that there is a bridge that's going to, be, going to be built between you and that Akashic record that you have. Now, right now, you only believe the Akashic record is like a book set, a library of who you've been and what you've done. That is not what it is at all. It's a pool of energy that combines all the lifetimes you've ever had into a well of wisdom, experiences, knowledge. That's what you pull on. Not who you were or what your name is or was or how long ago it was or what the trade was that you did or the problems you had. Dear ones, that's linear. Your DNA is going to start becoming slightly quantum. I'm going to explain more of that in a moment. Part of being in survival mode for these thousands of years before this shift requires you to be in full 3D. That's all. All you can see is existence. And you survive the only way you can. We said it this morning. You have to have a winner. You have to have a loser. And as you progress and things begin to clear, there's going to be tools. The Akashic Acuity is one. You're going to pull upon the wisdom of the past and you're going to bring it forward. And the kind of wisdom we're talking about is collective from having been on earth numbers of times. You don't pull on one lifetime, you pull on all of them. Can you imagine sitting with a master and the master has lived thousands of years and has experienced so much and you sit at the feet of this master, almost a superhuman, being that old, thousands of years old. And the master begins to speak and the master says, here is what I want to give you based upon thousands of years of life experience and beauty and you start writing in a linear way that particular lecture might last a year <laughs> now I want you to look at that metaphor because that is a tool that is coming your way imagine flooding into you a wisdom of knowing that's thousands of years of lifetimes all at once 
An in you come into the planet, not only as a soul, but a wise, wise old soul. It makes a difference to those around you who have not had this. And they will look at you differently. They'll realize that you have something that they need. You will be attract, attractive to many because of the wisdom that you have and the balance that you have. Akashic acuity. That is a new tool for the old soul. Not all will have it. You have to understand that of all of the, the ones who have lived on this planet, there's only literally a fraction that have lived all lives. From the beginning, there are those in the room from the beginning who have been here. This means that in the future there will be wiser ones than others and it will be granted, it will be seen. Some will be sought out because of it. It's new. And finally the shamanic energies that you have through your wisdom will be seen and honored and you will be placed in a place where you can teach it. That's the future. A whole new paradigm of spiritual recognition not in a conclave not not a celibate priest but a regular human being who is recognized to have a kashik acuity is it possible do you think that humanity would ever get to a point where they could see that I'll tell you this, it's happened before. How many generations are you talking about, Cryon? The answer is yes. It always is yes. It's as fast as you want, it's as slow as you want. But dear ones, it may happen faster than you think. You're already starting to see it in the children. They're wiser than you were. Hey, here it comes wiser than you were at the same age. Here it is. You're looking at it. You're staring it in the face. So it's not as odd as you think, really. Another one we have talked about. The intuition of the human being will be more available careful my partner, but, but slower. Intuition right now is, is a flash in the pan. It passes through your mind, through your consciousness so fast you have no idea if it even happened. <laughs> and you'll say, what was that? Did I really get an intuitive flash? And, and, and I wish I could slow it down and look at it and analyze it. And that is what you're going to be able to do. Intuition will take a place that is as solid as intellect and logic is today. Intuition will be sitting there giving you a choice. It'll even be in color. And you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Imagine having an intuitive consciousness that is as clear as logic and intellect. Doesn't it make sense? Because intuition is a multidimensional process. Doesn't it make sense that as you become more multidimensional, that it would slow down, present itself, be there for you? My partner today gave you a lesson on what you could do with your intuition, sensing the potentials ahead of you, turning left and right, based on intuition only and not logic. Plan synchronicity is what he said. The new human will have that so clear. So clear. Will everyone have it? No. Not as clear as the old soul. So the old soul is going to get the evolutionary tools first and that is because 
you're in a higher grade level. Dear ones, you've been through it. Doesn't it make sense that the ones coming to the planet for the first time would not have the same set of tools than the ones who've been here a thousand times? That's you. There'll be some who reject it. That's free choice. No judgment. And you'll reject it because you just are not ready. Or because you're in a box and you're afraid of it. Fear of enlightenment is a big, big issue with old souls. All of you know beautiful human beings who would never be in this room. <laughs> some of them are your children. Some of them are, their, are your partners. Some of them are your sisters and your brothers. And they're beautiful. And they have many of the attributes we talk about. They'd never be here, ever. They just don't want it. They believe it, but not this time. There's always a next time. We've told you before, some reincarnate and they have a rest period. <laughs> They're on vacation. They're not going to come to a meeting. They're not going to go to work. Not in the light work that you are. Not now. But they will. And it's not up to you to drag them here. I want you to see God in them just like you see God in those around you now. No judgment. That's number two. Number three is something we have not mentioned before, and this is going to be called inflationary energy. <laughs> energy, listen to this, energy that expands because you looked at it. Listen, it expands because you looked at it. It has an awareness as you pull upon certain energies in your life. Perhaps it's understanding, perhaps it's compassion, perhaps it's healing, perhaps it's many of these things. They're energies in a human being. And you go there and you start to work with one of them. Perhaps you're a healer. Perhaps you're, you're a reader and you are working in one area of energy and I want you to get ready for this and it starts to grow by itself. You're used to a linear process where you take a shovel and you dig so much dirt and there's only so much dirt and there's a pile and a hole. <laughs> now get ready for this because this is not linear. You take the shovel and you dig down and the dirt flies up by itself. And suddenly you have a huge pile of dirt in this very small hole. That's not linear. It's an honoring of conscious intent. Inflationary energy is energy that's going to build almost by itself because you looked at it, because you work with it, because you want it, because it's appropriate, because it is part of your growth. It knows it belongs to you. It's part of a new tool set that you didn't expect. I really haven't even given you the whole story. The last one is not the last one. You might even call it the first one. And this is where it gets complex. Something we've never described before. Dear ones, I want my partner to be careful here. Human cellular structure is partly quantum. Quantum is a word we have used before that means multidimensional. Human cellular structure is partly multidimensional. If it were not, you would not have a field of study called quantum biology. It's here, it's on the planet, and it's seen. That should tell you that human cellular structure is partly multidimensional. 
quantum biologists have done studies where the presence of DNA in an experiment will affect the spin of an electron in a quantum field. And when you remove that DNA, the spin stops. Cause and effect, you see, DNA, human cellular structure is partly multidimensional. Now here's what's going to happen. In an evolution process that is spiritual, in a DNA that starts to build to a higher level of efficiency, 44 and beyond, that partial multidimensionality becomes less partial. It starts to become fully multidimensional. What happens to a human being when their cellular structure starts to become more quantum? What did you see with the masters of the planet? There have been masters on this planet that control and work with physical things, with their minds, all the time. It didn't stop 2,000 years ago. Some of them are here now. Different countries, different names, where you'll actually see a master process where with the human mind and a human being working at a greater than 44 percentage will be able to take their consciousness and affect the matter around them, perhaps even change it. Moving it is easy. Changing it is a little harder. We'll give it a name. It's an alliance with matter. When certain matter becomes multidimensional, it has an alliance with all matter around it. I don't expect you to understand this. When you take this kind of a human being and apply the energy of pure consciousness, you have a human being that can create things out of nothing or move things around. And you might say, that sounds like a superpower. And I'm going to say to you, it is a super divine power where you are allied with matter to the degree where it changes the paradigm of life itself. What happens to, to humans in the future? If they all could do this, what would it be like? It's called a graduate planet. And you would say, that's never going to work. We could do that. Criminals would use it. And, and this and that would happen. Dear ones, get out of this survival box for a moment. In a higher consciousness, there are no criminals. Oh, there's variations of light. And that's all there is. Is it possible to have a planet where there's only light? What if I told you that's where you're headed? Oh, not this generation, dear ones, and not the next one or the next one or the next one or even the next one or the next one. This takes a while, and we have seen it before. There are planets in this galaxy that went through the precession of the equinoxes, the very same kind of thing different rules of course because there's different things in the sky but it's the same kind of thing it was a, a marker and they went through it and the consciousness started to raise eventually the planet itself was light I want to tell you again do you realize how young you are old soul, do you know how young you are? This planet is billions of years old. And at the last possible second, there was life. And here you are, 
sitting here bragging about 100,000 years, maybe even 200,000 years of having humanoids here when you're looking at other planets in a galaxy that could be 13 billion years old. <laughs> what, about a, what about a civilization that's 2 million years old? That's young. Do you realize how fresh this is? How new this is? It is. There are those who have been around a lot longer, who know who you are. Some have helped seed you and given you the 23 chromosomes instead of 24. The ones who are still here, the ones who helped the ancients with many names, the ones who are benevolent and loving and wise, but you have free choice to see them or not. Eventually, you'll meld with them. This is what we have seen before. Oh, not now. The shift since 2012 is very, very young. 2013 didn't count. You're three years old. You're three years old in a new consciousness, in a new energy, in a new shift. You're three. It's nothing. And yet, you sit here because you're starting to feel it. You're starting to know that something has changed. And I'm giving you not just the, the future that's so wild sounding, but also what's coming next. The alliance with matter, oh, it'll come. The akashicness, the, the intuition, that is on that that is really right before you. Wisdom, that's first. We give you these things because we've seen them before. We give you these things as a hope for the planet, but mostly to tell you that what's going on in your DNA is a 24-7, not compartmentalized anymore. That's the task. That's the only one right now for you. When you walk out of the room, the channeling is not over. It continues in your soul. Every moment of the day, a higher self that you carry around with you is channeling to you. Pretty soon it becomes part of you. Pretty soon you look at things differently. You look at humans differently. You look at the future differently. You look at death differently. That's 24-7. That's where it's going. By the way, if you even begin to have an alliance with matter, you do understand, do you not, that that eliminates disease inappropriateness that grows in your body is fully controllable with a human being with DNA that is operating at a higher, higher efficiency. We said it before, it shows itself every so often and you think it's a miracle called spontaneous remission. It's there body somehow cleans itself up right away in moments and the disease is gone all by itself and you raise your hands and say thank you God instead perhaps you ought to raise your hands and say thank you human for starting to evolve and showing the rest what is possible for everyone Everything I have told you, everything I have said today, there is someone doing it on the planet now as an example of where it's going. Remember, the masters of the ages all did it as an example of where it's going. Let that sink in to those who want proof and logic that these things could be real and true. This is the message of the hour of the
the day of the year for all those who wish to know what the next step is to enhance their lives 24-7. A walk with your higher self in an energy that is beautiful. Get rid of the compartmentalization. And so it is.